Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for this latest review of Bubble Frog DX. This is an updated PC version of a Game Boy Color game I backed on Kickstarter last year. This one holds a special place in my heart. Timbo Johnson, the developer, was behind one of the first Kickstarters I backed when I started a good game lobby. During the campaign, I played the game on stream and he was there watching me struggle through few levels while I cracked up. Despite the game being outright adorable, it can be hilariously difficult. Just a side note, Timbo was kind enough to offer me a review key of the game, but since I already backed the campaign and received the key through Kickstarter, I'll be running a contest. Just subscribe and comment on this video for a chance to win a free copy of Bubble Frog DX. I'll pick the winner by next Friday. And if you don't win, don't worry, the game is only $3, making this awesome experience an absolute steal. Let me touch briefly on the story of Bubble Frog DX. You are Bubble Frog, a frog in a bubble, if that wasn't obvious enough. Onigiri reaches out to you because they've lost their Onigiri friends and need your help getting them back. Only you can save them. With 50 levels of puzzles and over 100 Onigiri to collect, you're in for a great time navigating through spike-filled, brightly colored, and fantastic levels. Let's jump right into the gameplay. You can use your keyboard or controller to play, but I prefer controller. You use a thumbstick to move around and press A to make Bubble Frog jump and float. If you hold up while jumping, you get a boost to jump. Those are the simple mechanics. The thing is you need precise timing to navigate different levels with Onigiri hidden in tough to reach places, while spike enemies move around or spiked walls surround you. Each level begins by displaying how many Onigiri you can collect. Once you've gathered them all, you head to a dark orb like Portal that takes you to the next level. Some levels require you to collect keys to unlock the portal, while others feature wind machines that throw Bubble Frog around quickly. My favorite levels involve portals that move around, creating their own puzzle as you figure out how to reach the Onigiri that are just out of reach and off-screen. The game is separated into four chapters, each with different, brightly colored backgrounds and new music to accompany them. Let's jump into these pixel graphics. I'm a bit biased here because I kind of love Timbo's game design and colorful worlds he creates. His previous game, Chumbles Bumbles, <laughs> now that I say it out loud it sounds so funny, another Game Boy title, is also a ton of fun. You should definitely check it out. Bubble Frog even has an Easter egg referencing Sir Chumbles. The pixel art style and colorful world make exploring the game a joy. Between levels, you're introduced to characters from Bubble Frog's world, like a Cyclops named Francis, a bodybuilder, Gimma, twins Pim and Pom, and my personal favorite, Mr. Squeaks, a clown. The character designs are so funny and colorful that I'm hoping for a sequel so I can dive even deeper and <coughs> maybe get featured <coughs> in the game, Timbo, if you're listening to this. The soundtrack is a lot of fun. Each chapter has its own song along with the main intro theme that plays in the menu and the museum section. All the music features the bleeps and bloops typical of a Game Boy game, but the intensity of the blue world sets the mood perfectly. Here's my favorite song from the game. One of the major upgrades moving from a Game Boy ROM to PC is that Timbo had a chance to put his unique spin on the main menu. You enter a museum where you see a Frog Boy color that you use to start the game. You can also check out the game credits, fan art, and portraits. A shout out to the backers who helped bring this release to life. I jumped on one of the tiers immediately to become an executive producer. I didn't do much aside from backing the Kickstarter, but it came with a credit and a portrait. Look at me in that pristine portrait. It's absolutely stunning. I may be a little bit biased here. There's also a nice shout out in the credits, where Timbo accidentally spelled my name wrong during the first release, but then corrected it in an update with the most hilarious way possible. It truly is the funniest and the best. Timbo also added a whole new area called Ink Zone to the game, which has its own song and darker vibe. The challenge here is that you only have 20 lives to complete the whole thing. I don't claim to be good at video games, and I proved that by dying 10 times in the second level of Ink Zone. I still have yet to complete it. Bubble Frog DX is a breath of fresh air in the Game Boy ROM scene. It has all the makings of a classic game I would have loved growing up with. I even loaded the ROM on my analog pocket where it looks fantastic and plays seamlessly. I love supporting crowdfunding campaigns, and this one was a win for sure. Bubble Frog DX is one of my favorite games released this year and a must-play for Game Boy aficionados. I can't wait to see what Timo comes up with next, whether it's Bubble Frog 2, another Chumbles Bumbles, or a completely new adventure. 
You can bet it'll have great visuals and be adorable. Thank you for watching my review of Bubble Frog DX. And if you like indie game reviews like this, make sure to check out the reviews popping up on your screen now. We're less than 150 subscribers from the 500 goal. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and as always, GG.